I have an iPhone, and what I learned through very painful experience is that if you are going to take video on the iPhone, well, if you're gonna take photographs, you know you can do two ways to do it, right? Up or down. When you take video, please, 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 take your video sideways. It's awful. Now, I did it once like this, and I learned so painfully hard that now when I see professional people at events taking video like this, I wanna go up to them and say, Move your camera. I just, it drives me crazy. You want to take the video sideways. It's important. And your phones or your cameras, you will know what the best way to do it is. This is, a, this is what happens if you film it like this. I lost it. See how this? It's called dead space. See how And it's a beautiful shot, though. It's a beautiful shot. It's a beautiful event. Will never get recaptured because I am holding the camera like this. So each of your cameras, you will know how to do it from bad. You will learn the bad way first because that's always the way you can go first. Hold it the right way. The other thing that's really important, and you are very smart, and if everyone can see what she's doing with her camera, she has. What do you have on your camera? Tripod. A tripod. A tiny little beautiful tripod. That's great because when I was filming that parade for 50 minutes, do you know how long your hand can do this without going? Not 50 minutes. So I actually was in a perfect place because I was putting it on, a, on the platform. So I was happy. I just had to make sure I, when it was on the platform I, that I didn't do this too much. And I've actually, so I've looked all over, I've actually found a tripod for a mobile phone. I'm so happy. So now I have that. But what I've learned is, you know, you think you'll, you're thinking you're in <clears throat> England for tea time and you'll be holding it like this, right? It's like, don't do this because these fingers will get really tired and then these will wear out and your finger will go right into the lens and screw up everything. Because this is the lens, right? So make sure you don't put your thumb in the lens. So the way that I've learned to do this, and you can do it any way you want, I've learned to hold it like this because this gives me a lot of power. I hold onto my elbow and there's less, it's not the digits that have to keep everything stable. I grip it. And this gives you so much, no, the other way. Because this way you can see it. If you go like this, then you can't see what you're filming. So I do the muscle man thing. And that's beautiful. You No, it's upside down. Do it right. Let's have a little training here. Oh, there you go. Yep. <laughs> there you go. See, that way you get to see it, and you don't screw it up by having it sideways, and you don't have your finger all of a sudden fall into it. This, this is my trademark secret, which I give to you because I like you. <laughs> but this is a great way to hold your phone. And we were trying to figure out, they say, well, make sure you know where the mic is. I never knew where the mic was, and frankly, I don't care where the mic is. But, uh, because the, these phones have great mics, but it turns out that there's a mic where you talk and there's a mic where the camera is. So just for, just for laughs, don't put your thumb on the side of the phone. Because you don't want to cover the mic if there is one there. So just, that's why you want to know where your mic is. So that's, this is a wonderful invention that I am Moving on to you for a very small cost. Okay, then uh, noise. Okay, so I was at this great event, and it was a room full of people, and I got cute. Because I could have just as happily taped this woman in this room full of people because these phones have great directional mics. But no, I said, it's noisy here. Let's go off into a corner. So we went off into a corner. I closed the door. It was a small enclosed space. So what happened? I got this huge echo. So whereas before I could have had some nice background noise, I had this woman echoing on me. For, and it looked like really a tinny place. So be, don't get cute. And the other thing I say to people is, when I videotape you, your voice must come to my phone. Because what people will do, is like I'm taping them, right? And they'll say, well, I want to show you this over here. It's like when the voice goes over here, I, they don't, I don't get any of the sound. So you say to them, 
talk loudly, clearly, and into my phone. Don't turn your face like this and talk like this because I lose you. So they need to know that. I say to them, okay, I'm going to interview you. I'm not going to edit this. I tell them that. I'm not going to edit. What you say is what we get because I'm not going to manipulate your message. I want them to feel comfortable that what they say is actually what's going to be on the screen. Don't talk more than um, two or three minutes because no one wants, is going to listen to you for more than two or three minutes. I mean, they usually do talk for more than two or three minutes, but in their minds they know your, my message is going to be two or three minutes. None of us want to watch anything more than two or three minutes. So, uh, and I am going to post it on the CCTV website and it might go on the CCTV. So the first thing I want you to do is that when I'm going to turn it on, uh, I'm going to say, say hi to CCTV and, and tell us your story. And I do this because I want them to know what I'm using their thing for. I want them to acknowledge it. So it's my own personal way of getting them to realize there's something going to happen to this tape and you're speaking to a specific audience. As soon as she's done, I immediately send it to YouTube and it gets processed in a second. So by the time I get home, it's already ready to post. It's a beautiful thing. If you have a smartphone, that's the best thing you can possibly do. So as long as it, you know, their, their face on the screen has enough space so that they don't feel like they're right on top of you, that's as far as I go. And so I will be this close. I have done interviews when we're both sitting down and I have been this far, but in the quiet room. I wouldn't go further than that. You just want to take, you just want to get the, the audio. audio. The audio. Then you go to iRecord, or I, there are several apps that are just for voice. There's many. Go, go on to wherever you buy your apps and search for recording. There's 500 of them. I, people will, for my experiences, they ask me, and I say, do whatever makes you feel comfortable. And they tend to, when they get nervous, they'll look at the camera and otherwise. I try, to, I try to maintain eye contact with them. They can look any way they want, but I try to stay on them so that they feel more comfortable. And they can look any way they want, but I don't know, does it matter? What's most important is that you, you tell them what to do because otherwise the inconsistency is what's bad. It's like yeah. either look at the camera or I think for mobile reporting, I think it makes sense to make eye contact. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it, and it really depends, you know, what the message is. If you're trying to have, if it's more of an interview, I think usually the normal practice is looking at the interviewer. Yeah. Um, but if it's like, I want to tell the people out there so and so and so, then it's looking at the camera. But as long as you just tell them what to do, otherwise eyes will shift. Yeah, and then they, they look nervous, yeah. so that's a very good point. And sometimes you'll do two people together, and they'll look at each other, and it's, you know, it's fine. People know you're doing this. When I upload it to YouTube, I upload it to make it available only to the people who have the link. Because I want to get home, and on my computer, or later on, I want to see what I videotaped, and if it's worthwhile. If I like what I did, I'll do the titles, I'll do the stabilization of the shakes or whatever I need to do, and then I'll say public so that people can see it and embed it into their pieces if they want. But I try to start out so that I'm the only one who sees it. Take it and move it to your, go to your webpage or wherever you want to embed it, paste it. Paste that exactly as it is. Once you do that, the video box will be on your webpage and people will be able to turn it on perfectly. And the, well, the best yeah. that you can put titles, and the best thing about YouTube is that when it says what, how to, when you're looking at it, there's a section that says edit. If you click on that, there's a section that says, I will, we will automatically try to stop the shaking and try to fix the light. And so you press those, and then it tries to stabilize it. It does that by itself. All you do is push the button. That um, some iPads may or may not have 3G, so you may or may not have internet out and about anywhere you are. You might need to be connected to Wi-Fi to use it. That would be one advantage or disadvantage. And also, the quality of the lens might be different, too. The cameras all have a little bit different, so, you know, probably at the end of the day, it's not going to make the biggest deal, but if you were trying to decide if you had both, which to use, that would be one consideration. I have both, and 
I think the iPad is great for being able to play with your stuff. And I think it's really weird, personally, when someone was videotaping with that big black yeah. thing in front of them. I think that's just a weird thing. And it's heavy, and you will be unstable. Hmm.